Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, what up? Go. Um, somebody commented on the video we posted yesterday. Jess. And they wanted to know our experiences with hoodoo. And um, I know I I know I, I practice some hoodoo, I guess. I don't really... I just practice magic, you know, but a lot of the stuff that I do that I'm willing to share with everybody is, I don't know, let's call it hoodoo, but I guess it's, it can, you know, I, I, I call it brujeria, you know, or hechiceria, you know, like spells and charms, and like workings, because my grandmother, our grandmothers were Mexican, like. Yeah, and they practiced. Um, their own form. So some of the things we do, we picked on as children, picked up from them. We saw what they did and just, in a sense, copied them or instinctually kind of did what they did. Other things we've added to, you know, some of it is experiences and things we've read or people we've met at Botanicas. Um, and by talking to the people that work there and developing relationships with them, you can become friends with these people. They, they clue you in on a lot of things. So you add it to your magical repertoire you know and to be honest like i never really thought of what my grandmother was doing was as magic growing up i just thought it was like routine or that's ritual. what they did yeah you know, a lot of prayer saints a lot of saints and working with them but i didn't start getting into that until i was like 21 because i was already practicing and sitting you other know, forms yeah other forms know, of magic like witchcraft you know traditional witchcraft or things that yeah, and then later on, I kind of adopted what was already instinctually in me anyway, or inherently in me. Right? That's, that's well, how yeah. I, I mean, that's part of it. And I think part of it is we remember a lot from our past lives. I do believe in past lives, obviously. And some of the things we do instinctually, I feel like I've done before, you know? And that's why we do do it, you know? It's the re-remembering of the things you once did you know, and adding that also. Ancestral magic too, because some of it is from your bloodline, you know, it's just in you, you know what I mean? And I'm sure if you think blood is important, I know it sounds freaky, but it is. Blood is life kind of in that sense, you know? The blood is the life. Yeah, so if it's in your blood, that in its sense is going to course through your, your energy system, you know? You're going to pick up on things. That's from more of like f um, familial you know, hereditary, that, that's hereditary witchcraft, yeah. that's, that's that what that is. Uh -huh. But then we know, we have our secret witchcraft. <laughs> is it witchcraft? I would just say like magic, magical techniques. I guess magic, yeah. magical techniques and things you've learned. Because a lot of the people that I grew up around practiced all different forms of witchcraft, ceremonial magic, you know, different forms of high magic golden dawn that i picked up things just by talking to them and seeing them do things i remember seeing Dee, Dee doing uh like one of the first rituals i ever saw i think i was like 15 and i was outside the house and she was on the roof and i saw her there was incense and candles and i remember thinking like oh, whoa that's awesome what you doing and my friend mega dave told me my girlfriend's a witch it's a full moon and i was just i was so like just wow by that whole the whole thing I swear I could feel the energy coursing through, you know what I mean? But I remember being like, that's pretty badass. That's, those are things that Jacob tells me. You know, like, because I've always just been by myself and so yeah. not until we came back into each other's lives. But, um, like, he, he also said, I always a trip watching you. Because, like, it's it's this ritual production when you're dressing your candles and the incense. Or, like, I already have it memorized. It was like, and he is so gifted. That's Jacob, he's really gifted. Like, Children? being as young as he is. And he's only like 20, he just barely turned 21. Yeah, he's young. And there's a little, oh, there you can go so far. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Like, I started my son out young. It, but he's more geared towards high magic. He's very intellectual. And he likes, that's that speaks to him, you know? It's a very masculine system, of form of magic. Well, he's very, he's a very, he's a Libra. And he's got a rising Capricorn. He's very thinky. Very mm -hmm. thinky. And uh, he, his ideas sometimes, man, they're out there. I swear, sometimes the things he tells me blows me away. And I'm like, he sees things from such a high vantage point, you know. Um, children are amazing. And if you give them the tools and let them discover their way on their magical path, it's really beautiful to watch. Just like watching Athena. You, watch, I know. you get to see it unfold, you know. And you get to see the, the, the transitions they go through, you know, and learn. It's amazing. That's true. The first um, hoodoo spell that I ever did was a honey jar. And that was like, that after that, that I became hooked on it because I saw how fast it worked, 
how potent it was. And like, I swear I'm going to get a tattoo of a honey jar somewhere. Like, like that was my first tootie spell. And that, you know, what I was told was hoodoo, you know, because when I, as I got older and, you know, I perfected the whole honey jar thing, you know, and I learned that a lot of it is used in Mexico. You know, and it's not just honey. I think honey jars are really popular and everybody wants to use honey. But there are other ways to sweeten somebody. Honey is really, okay, let me tell you something about honey. Honey is a really good preservative. Okay. And it takes a while. So you can't expect it to happen. Like that. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, for, for it to have a full potency, I would say like three months, you know, but there, if you want to go faster, use syrup like maple syrup is really thin it's a lot thinner than honey and you could work the jar and have a lot quicker results but you'd have to keep working at it or keep doing something i mean just use your noggin you know what i mean like think about the things you can substitute it's almost like cooking how you can substitute things you know what i mean and and you can make a cake more dense or lighter by taking an ingredient out or, or using a different ingredient. So you get a, kind of magic in some really weird ways, kind of like that. So yeah. symbology, especially the symbology yeah. in sweeteners. Mm -hmm. Okay. White sugar, white Caucasian person, brown sugar, mulatto, you know, all the complected person, molasses, your African and it's descent. also your intention you put behind how you're using that. So always focus on that or state it or whatnot, you know what I mean? But it all goes hand in hand and that's where you being creative in your magical way is very important because when you're at home and let's say you don't have all those magical supplies you usually do, you're going to have to use something around the house. You need to make it happen. You know what I mean? You're going to have to start looking through your cupboards and start thinking outside of the box. I remember one time I did this spell for somebody. I didn't have a jar with me. All I had was an old like prescription bottle like, and there I put go. syrup in it. That's all I had. And I'm like, I'll do it. And it worked just as fine. You, that's about being a true, like, ingenious little magician. You know what I mean? Like, thinking outside the box, because you have to sometimes. And you might be somewhere, you know, maybe you're at a hotel, you didn't bring all your stuff. Like, think about it. You're going to have to figure something out. So, always practice magic. A real witch or magician, they're always doing magic on a daily basis on some level. You know what I mean? Really. Whether it's just with their minds or whether they're using stuff in their kitchen or they need to do something really quick to bring them money. But there is... There, all it's a constant time. practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not about how many books you have or how many statues you have or like what your altar looks and like. And don't get me wrong, that looks cool when you got that all set up, you know, like that adds to it, but you don't necessarily need it. Because it's not it's not magical at that point. It's just like they're just objects. They're to put you possibly in the right frame of mind, you know? But they don't really serve a purpose. It's the energy within those objects that like that holds the purpose, you know what I mean? So you don't need them, you can use your mind, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it does help sometimes. Some people need to feel that. Hence it's it's a little it, yeah. about, especially if you study shamanism and they believe that everything has a spirit. That's true. And you can tap into the energy energies like of those objects. But it depends like, on you have to you have to know how to tap in. You know, that that's that's <laughs> kind of defeats the person. Like I remember this one time I had a conversation with some guy I was kind of dating. And he got mad at me and he stopped talking to me because we were talking about witchcraft. And he was like, well, I did that stupid fucking spell and the book. I lit the candles. I did all that. I didn't see anything, so I don't believe it's real. And I'm like, do you know how to make it work? Do you know how to, like, you know, it's not just lighting a candle and that's it, right? And he's like, well, I don't believe it. And then you just stop talking to me. But a lot of times in those books, they just assume you already know what to do. You know, like, they'll have a setup yeah. for you. But they automatically assume like you must already, you know, that you know how to dress a candle or that you know how to move and manipulate energy, how to empower your ritual tools. You know, I, it's, I had to get myself into the habit of it because I would buy all these things and not see results because I was more concentrating on the fact that I held all these things. Yeah. And I'd have to, you know, put myself and, you know. True focus. Yeah, and focus and discipline. Okay, don't forget to empower each individual thing don't forget to put your energy in it don't forget to and you have a lot of it has to do with like putting yourself in the mind frame mm -hmm. um that's why little kids are able to manifest things very easily there's nothing telling them they can't they know they can you know what i mean um and i think when they're young enough and you keep them on that magical path 
path and they know they can do that. Like my son, he knows he doesn't need anything. He knows he can make it happen. They know that. That's what we teach them. You know what I mean? And in that way, they will be stronger than us actually mm-hmm. because of that. We didn't have that. You know what I mean? In that sense, you know? Like, yeah, a lot of mind-altering substances <laughs> brought us back to that Always. <laughs> but like, yeah, well, even with my first magic teacher, that's what I mean. I mean, that it was still laid out to me that this is the way you do it. You know what I mean? There was still a structure and order. As for my son, I'm letting him know, like, there's really no order. It's really up to you to create your reality and your will. you got to use it and wield it, you know? So yeah. that's what I mean. It's a little different. As for people that are in a structured environment, they do it this way because they feel it has to be done this way, I think, in order for it to... They've already... They were, that's how they... They've made it in their reality. Yeah. So they have to do it that way because they've already created the reality to make them have to do it that way. So That was just our... I guess our video on touching that subject lightly. But then yeah. We're, like, we're not hoodoo women. You know, we're, we're giving our opinion. Maybe conjure women. Conjure women. You know what yeah, I mean? But, but there's a lot more. To yeah. Conjure. Oh, fuck yeah. And, yeah. And I can't tell you the history of hoodoo, so don't ask me. You'd have to I just go to practice else. magic. That, that. We, like we said, we talk about our experiences. Ours. Not anybody else's. You know what I mean? That's why they have their YouTube channel. So, you can listen to theirs, you know? Or whatnot. But, um... Somebody asked about it, so we thought we would touch on it a bit and explain a little bit of what we know and kind of what we've done, you know. My sister, she likes the hoodoo, you know. Hoodoo's cool. I mean, I've learned. I, I do think it definitely has its purpose, most definitely. You know what I mean? I see the benefit of it. You Just know? expand your Magic horizons. is magic, you know, ultimately. You know, it will manifest. You can use there's a It's just a it. new way of practicing magic. Mm-hmm. Anyways, bye. Bye.